Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All the praise is due to Allah. We praise Him and we seek His help and we ask for His forgiveness. And we take refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions. We're here today to talk about the proof that Islam is the truth. Now in the previous episode, we talked about and we discussed the written preservation of the Qur'an. How the Qur'an was preserved in writing over a period of the 23 years in which the Qur'an was revealed. However, it's very important to understand that primarily societies in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, were in fact oral societies. In other words, most of the information that they transmitted from one to the other was based upon stories, information that they remembered generation to generation, passed on from child to son, from father, daughter, and so on and so forth in gatherings. So this is how information was spread and memorized and stories were attained in the hearts and minds of people. And in that respect, the Qur'an is not really any different. However, the degree of the preservation of the Qur'an in its oral form is really something remarkable. And that is what we want to talk about today. Actually, the Qur'an itself mentions in the 17th surah, in the 106th ayah, the meaning of which is, and it is a Qur'an we have divided into parts that you may recite it to men at intervals and we have revealed it in stages. So the Qur'an is saying that it is a book that has been divided into parts, different chapters, and it was revealed at stages and there is a great wisdom behind the creator of the heavens and the earth doing that. And the reason is because this facilitated the memorization and the retention of the Qur'an in the memories of people. God would reveal some verses of the Qur'an at a particular time concerning a particular incident and people would memorize those verses. The Prophet ﷺ, the Messenger of God, Muhammad, he would memorize those verses. Those companions who could write, those scribes, he would order them to write down the verses of the Qur'an and they would write it down. But the Prophet himself, it's important to understand, was illiterate. He was ummi. He was a person who was not learned. He couldn't read and write. In fact, there were very, very few people in Arabia at that time who were actually capable of reading and writing. Very few of them. But some of them who could would write down the verses of the Qur'an on various bits of parchment and even palm leaves or you know, the cured animal skins or bits of papyrus, for example, which was all that was available at the time. But most people, they would memorize the verses of the Qur'an. Not only would they memorize them, but then they would try to inculcate and practice what those verses were teaching in their life. So this had a type of dual effect, memorizing it in terms of the actual words and then implementing it in terms of their actual actions. So this is one of the great wisdoms of the Qur'an being revealed in stages. It also meant that the implementation of Islam, the practice of the religion of Islam, was allowed to be done gradually. And this is really in concordance and in agreements with the human nature. It's very difficult for the human beings to suddenly change everything all in one go. And that is one of the amazing aspects of the revelation of the Qur'an, how it was revealed in stages, bit by bit, slowly, so that people were able to practice it in their lives. Now, one of the things the Qur'an tells us that is actually a recitation that has been made easy to memorize. The Qur'an actually, and in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He has made the Qur'an easy to memorize. And this is something that is in a really astounding fact, how the Qur'an has been memorized over the ages. 
And in order to aid that memorization amongst the generality of the Muslims, of course, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the various imams or the people who were leading the prayers for the Muslims in different parts of Medina, for example, at the time, they would recite the Qur'an out loud in the dawn prayer and the sunset prayer and the night prayer. So they are constantly hearing the recitation of the Qur'an in the prayers. And this is especially more the case in the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, would read through the whole of the Qur'an. And this was a habit that the Muslims had, and they retain it until today of reciting the whole of the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. And also, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, he would also encourage the Muslims to memorize the Qur'an. In fact, it is a very, very virtuous thing in Islam to be a person who has memorized the whole of the Qur'an. Indeed, there was an incident where two companions who were very, very close friends died both at the same time. And the Prophet Muhammad gave the first burial and the most honored position in the grave to the person who had memorized the Qur'an the most. In fact, the person who is the Imam is most entitled to be the Imam because he has memorized the most of the Qur'an. Also, the Prophet wasallam, he would encourage memorizing certain verses and certain chapters and certain or, or surahs of the Qur'an. For example, before the Friday prayer, the Prophet Muhammad used to encourage very much the reading of Surah Al-Kaf. Also, the Prophet Muhammad described, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he described, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, Surah Yasin as being the heart of the Qur'an. He said that Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran would be intercessors for the people on the Day of Judgment, for the people who had memorized it. So all of these things were really an encouragement and a further incentive for people to memorize the verses of the Qur'an. So with all of these encouragements and the recitation of the Qur'an during the prayers, this is how stage by stage, piece by piece, the Qur'an came to be memorized in the minds and the hearts of people. So let's look a little bit further into some of the aspects of this memorization. By the time the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, had died, we find that there are many, many different people who had become hufaz or they had become memorizers of the entire Qur'an. And these people were very, very respected, of course, in the Muslim community because they had managed to memorize the entire Qur'an. And this memorization of the Qur'an was passed on generation after generation through all the generations of the Muslims until today. In fact, what we have is what is called a mutawatir transmission of the Qur'an. This concept of mutawatir, what does it mean? Well, essentially it is an idea or it means that so many different people have narrated a particular story or a particular thing from so many different directions. It is impossible, it's inconceivable that these people could have gathered together to invent a falsehood. In other words, imagine you have a thousand people. These thousand people, each of them are teaching another thousand people. And each of those thousand people teach another hundred people. Can you imagine how many hundreds of thousands of people that constitutes? And is it possible that these people could have all gathered together and conspired together to invent something? No, it's not something that is possible. And therefore, it is considered in terms of the oral transmission when something is a mutawatir. There are so many people that have narrated it. 
then it's impossible that they could have invented something. And this is the case with the Qur'an, the entire Qur'an, every verse of the Qur'an has come to us throughout the ages, a continuous mutawatir transmission of these verses of the Qur'an. Also, when someone wants to become a expert, a hafiz of the Qur'an, that they will also have to sit with a teacher and they will have to learn the Qur'an in a special way. And we're going to discover a little bit more about this and this very important chain of teachers of the Qur'an all the way back to the Prophet Muhammad after the break. So don't go away, join us after the break to discover more about the amazing Qur'an and its oral transmission throughout the ages. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum everybody, welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth and we're talking today about the oral transmission of the Qur'an, how the Qur'an was preserved in the minds and the hearts of the Muslims over the, the many generations. And we talked about the mutawatir, the transmission of the Qur'an, how the Qur'an was passed on generation after generation through countless thousands of Muslims who have memorized the entire Qur'an. But it's not only about memorizing the Qur'an. There is a science of tajweed. Tajweed is the exact and precise pronunciation of all the letters and all the words in the Qur'an. And it is something that in order to know it, you have to study it under a teacher. And traditionally, these teachers who have specialized in the tajweed and the recitation and the memorization of the Qur'an have acquired students, students have studied with them for maybe three to six years. And after maybe, it could be anything from three to six years, when a student has really reached proficiency in this particular field, then that scholar will give them what is called tazkiyah. It means they will give them a type of written approval to recite and to transmit the recitation of the Qur'an. And he only does this after very, very thoroughly checking that this person can recite the Qur'an precisely and concisely with the correct accent and with the correct elongation of certain sounds. So it's a science, really. And so this also further ensures that in no way, shape or form is the Qur'an allowed to be distorted and corrupted. Another thing that's very important to realize is that Arabic is a living language. It's a living language. People still speak Arabic today. And people who speak Arabic, they can pick up the Qur'an, they can pick it up, and they can read it, and they can understand it. Even though this is 1,400 years ago, people can still understand the Arabic of the Qur'an. So it is a living language. And this also, we have to understand, is very important in aiding the memorization of the Qur'an. It is the case of the Qur'an that literally countless millions of human beings throughout the ages have memorized the entire Qur'an. In fact, in the mosque where I work, one of the imams there had memorized the entire Qur'an by the time he was seven years old. I mean, think about that. He had memorized the entire Qur'an by the time he was seven years old. This is one of the truly amazing, miraculous aspects of the Qur'an. So this preservation of the Qur'an through the oral transmission and the memorization of the Qur'an in the minds of people is not something only that Muslims claim. It is something that even non-Muslim scholars have recognized and have commented about. So I'm just going to read now a few comments from some Orientalists. They are the scholars who expert, there's expertise in this field. So for example, A.T. Welch, he writes, For Muslims, the Qur'an is much more than scripture or sacred literature in the usual Western sense. Its primary significance for the vast majority through the centuries has been in its oral form. The form in which it first appeared, as the recitation 
that was chanted by Muhammad to his followers over a period of about 20 years. The revelations were memorized by some of Muhammad's followers during his lifetime. And the oral tradition that was thus established had a continuous history ever since, in some ways independent of and superior to the written Qur'an. Through the centuries, the oral tradition of the entire Qur'an has been maintained by the professional reciters, Qurra. Until recently, the significance of the recited Qur'an has seldom been fully appreciated in the West. Also a leading Orientalist, whose name is Kenneth Cragg, he said, the Qur'an is perhaps the only book, religious or secular, that has been memorized completely by millions of people. Let's repeat that. The Qur'an is perhaps the only book, the only book, religious or secular, that has been memorized completely by millions of people. And he goes on to say, this phenomenon of the Quranic recital means the text has traversed the centuries in an unbroken line of living sequence of devotion. It cannot therefore be handled as an antiquarian thing, nor a historical document of the distant past. The fact of hiv, meaning Quranic memorization, has made the Quran a present possession through all the lapse of Muslim time and given it a human currency in every generation, never allowing its relegation to bear authority and reference alone. This is a very deep and important statement because it really, really, in, it further reinforces that the Qur'an is not merely a reference work, it's not merely a text, it is something that is living, it is something that is vibrant, and the memorization and the constant renewal of this memorization is what makes the Qur'an so vibrant and so real in the hearts and the minds and the lives of everyday Muslims. In conclusion, we have a book absolutely unique in its origin and in its preservation on the substantial authority of which no one has ever been able to cast a serious doubt this is what the reverend bosworth smith quoted in his book muhammad and muhammadanism and i think it's just worth repeating that again it's a book he says unique in its origin and its preservation the authority of this preservation of the Quran no one has been able to cast a serious doubt now there have been people throughout the ages there have been people who have attempted in various shapes and various forms and some of these people have come forward recently trying to cast aspersions and some doubts on the authenticity of the Qur'an. But in fact, in reality, no one has been able to make a serious challenge to the oral transmission of the Qur'an. And this is the point that we really have to remember. The Qur'an has been written down. It has been recorded in written form. And we do have ancient manuscripts dating back very closely to the time of the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. They do exist. And we talked about that in the previous episode. But what adds to this indisputable authenticity of the Qur'an is this truly remarkable system of hivs, of the memorization of the Qur'an. And it's quite a remarkable thing that I experienced myself in the month of Ramadan, Muslims gather for what is called the Taraweh prayers. These are some special prayers in the nighttime, where Muslims come together 
and we pray for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, and a lot of the Qur'an is read. Now, of course, usually we will be led by an imam who has memorized the entire Qur'an, but almost inevitably, there are always two, three, four or five, maybe ten people, other people in the audience who have also either memorize that portion of the Qur'an that the Imam is reading, or maybe they themselves are hafaz, they are people who have memorized the entire Qur'an. Now people sometimes make mistakes, it's inevitable, human beings are fallible. They make mistakes, they forget things, they may get one verse confused with another. But almost inevitably, if the Imam stumbles, or he forgets, or he pauses, you hear another voice from within the congregation, reminding of one hafaz, of another, this self-correcting process in the oral memorization and transmission of the Qur'an. It is, you are witnessing when you hear this, a type of living miracle. You are witnessing how God is actively preserving His word in the hearts and the minds of the Muslims. And certainly Allah speaks the truth when He says, Inna nahnu nazalna al-dhikr wa inna lahu lahafidhun Verily, we have revealed the reminder and upon us is the preservation of it. This is a living miracle. Is there a book in the world like this? Is there anything that can be compared to the Qur'an in just this aspect alone? Yet, this is only the beginning of the wonders of the Qur'an. In our next episode, we are going to deal with the preservation of the hadith, the sayings and the actions and the tacit approvals of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. So that's what we're going to be talking about in the next episode. So please don't forget to join us where we will be talking about the preservation of the sunnah and the hadith and sayings of the final messenger, Muhammad. May God's peace and blessings be upon him. And may Allah guide you, and may Allah guide me, and may Allah guide all of us closer to the truth. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and I hope that you have been inspired and motivated by these amazing things that you are hearing, and you're going to be hearing more amazing things in episodes to come. So keep on tuning in to the proof that Islam is the truth. This is your brother, Abdurrahim Green, saying to you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.